Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Wednesday, March 11, 2020. Join us for the next 45 minutes as we deliver today's top stories around the globe. I am William Theo, and here are the headlines. The Department of Trade and Industry issues a 60-day price freeze on all basic necessities amid the COVID-19 threat in the country. Malacanang appeals to the public to avoid panic buying as the Trade Department assures there is enough supply of basic and prime commodities in the country. The Department of Health records 16 more cases of the coronavirus disease 2019 in the Philippines, bringing the total confirmed cases to 49. The Department of Health is set to release its guidelines for social distancing. Filipino Paul Volter E.J. Obiena still prepares for Tokyo 2020 amid growing COVID-19 concerns over the Olympics. And Moira De La Torre chosen to sing her own rendition of the song Reflection from Disney's live-action Mulan. The Department of Trade and Industry calls on the public not to practice panic buying amid rumors of lockdown. The agency assures prices of products will not increase despite the high demands. Ray Pelayo explains why. The Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI, reminds the public that the agency is implementing a price freeze on basic and prime commodities. This in accordance with the public health emergency declaration of President Rodrigo Duterte. This will last for 60 days. The products included in the price freeze are rice, cooking oil, marine products including dried fish products, egg, fresh pork and beef, vegetables and fruits, canned fish like sardines, coffee, bread, soap, bottled water, locally produced instant noodles, medicines, and liquefied petroleum gas or LPG. The DTI warns those who will engage in profiteering. Pwede sigurong ibaba ng retailer kung sa tingin nila pwede nilang pwedeng mabawasan yung profit nila pero hindi nila pwedeng itaas. The Trade Department assures there is enough supply of basic and prime commodities in the country. Trade Under Secretary Ruth Castello says that amid the COVID-19 outbreak, the delivery and transport of products continue. She adds there should be no panic buying. Pero kung sakaling magla-lockdown, Ang Metro Manila, we have sufficient supply. Maraming commissaries and warehouses ng manufacturers natin na nandito and the retailers. The DTI and a group of supermarket owners agreed to limit the sale of products just like alcohol that will be limited only to two bottles per customer. The Philippine Amalgamated Supermarkets Association advises its members to monitor wholesale buyers. Unless ipaligo mo yung alcohol, hindi mo kailangan ng sampung bote kung ikaw lang or a family of five dahil sa kamay lang naman ginagamit. The official explains that consumers may stock basic needs that will last for 7 to 10 days to avoid interaction with other people and possible virus infection. The DTI also reminds the public that health workers are prioritized in the wearing of personal protective equipment and products. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, Use and Rescue, Makati City. PhilHealth is now in the process of formalizing and operationalizing a new benefit. All Filipinos are beneficiaries under the universal health care law. Meanwhile, the palace appeals to the public to refrain from panic buying. Rosalie, De Rosalie Cos details us why. Several grocery stores run out of rubbing alcohol hand sanitizer and tissue today. Many shoppers went grocery shopping as if panic buying. But Malacanang has this appeal to the public. Buy only what is necessary because panic buying would only lead to hoarding and price increases. The palace also reiterates that individuals who had close contact with COVID-19 patients and have travel history to countries with local transmission of the coronavirus should be prioritized in providing medical attention and COVID-19 testing. The Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth will shoulder the COVID-19 testing according to Malacanang. 
Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles, member of the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, says that the public has nothing to worry about their expenses for medical treatment, especially those in the poverty line who might get infected with the virus. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. Meanwhile, authorities record an increasing number of coronavirus cases in the Philippines. There has also been rumors of lockdown in some areas which have led to some Filipinos to panic buy. But is it really panic buying that families must do? Mon Hoxon reports. The possible lockdown of cities in Metro Manila or perhaps the entire region has led people to think of stocking up supplies due to limited access to transportation and services should a lockdown is imposed. This has led many people to wonder if they could manage for at least two weeks at home without a run to the grocery store. By stocking up shouldn't mean panic buying. What's necessary is storing an adequate or reasonable supply of foods and items for emergency purposes. Here are some of the tips on how to stock up products the smart way. Write down two weeks worth of meals. Consider the foods you need for this period including breakfast, lunch, dinner and desserts. Don't forget to include foods that would be needed by any member of the family who might experience flu or fever in that period. Such foods may include soup, herbal tea, and electrolyte drinks. Buy food which will expire at a distant date. By doing so, you wouldn't need to go out frequently. This way, you can avoid interacting with other people which is a possible cause of virus infection. Buy an adequate number of liquid and bar soaps. According to experts, proper hand washing is one of the best ways to fight COVID-19. Store alcohol too, for when water is not available for hand washing. Make sure it is at least 70% alcohol solution. Buy cleaning products. This can be used in disinfecting objects inside your home that you most often touch or come in contact with. Don't forget that you'll also need plenty of paper products such as paper towels, tissue, and toilet paper. Consider picking up extra garbage bags so you can safely dispose of contaminated tissue and paper towels. But did you know that in times like this, food, alcohol, and paper items are not the only products we need to acquire? Find out more in another episode of informative videos on KDR-TV, the YouTube channel of Kuya Daniel Razon. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte clarifies the city has not been placed in lockdown contrary to claims of online reports. In Pasig City, Pasigenos are advised not to panic by, while Barangay West Crame in San Juan City has been disinfected. Harleen Delgado details why. The Department of the Interior and Local Government has made it clear there is no lockdown effective in Metro Manila as of the moment. This comes after Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte denied an online report that the city's government is planning to implement a lockdown amid the threats of increasing cases of COVID-19 in the country's largest city. In a statement, Belmonte said it is not planning to, nor even authorizes to place the city under lockdown. Mayor Belmonte adds she has ordered a team to look into different types of lockdown being done in other affected countries such as China and Italy that the city may mull over and possibly adopt. The GILG has earlier said there is no need for a lockdown in the national capital region unless the health department records community transmission. Meanwhile, in Pasig City, Mayor Vico Soto advises Pasigenos not to practice panic buying. Ang mga tindahan po natin ay hindi magsasara. Hindi po natin tinanapad pa yun dahil uh, kawawa naman yung mga ubusan. Ang isang tao ubusin lahat ng alkohol sa isang tindahan 
kawawa naman yung susunod na pamilya na kailangan din yung, yung uh, alcohol na yun. San Juan City, meanwhile, conducted disinfection in Barangay West Krame following a reported positive COVID-19 case. The health department advises the local government units and the public to conduct regular cleaning activities to combat the spread of the virus. Horlin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. All major programs in the Philippine National Police Headquarters have been cancelled. Meanwhile, the PNP chief has designated a quarantine area within Camp Krame. Lea Ilagan tells us why. The Philippine National Police is ready once the government declares a lockdown in Metro Manila because of the COVID-19 outbreak. PNP Chief Police General Archie Gamboa says, the 38,000 policemen will be deployed to implement law and maintain order. General Gamboa adds it is the Department of Health who will give the go signal to implement the lockdown. We will be utilizing the NCRPO as a strength of around 28,000. The Philippine National Police here in Camp Krame to, to include national separate units is around 10,000. So more or less we have uh, 30,000 to 40,000 to utilize in case these things would come up. President Rodrigo Duterte has earlier stated there is no need to impose a lockdown at this point because the situation in the national capital region is still manageable. But class suspension has been declared in all levels and schools within the metro until Saturday. Gamboa says the PNP will help convince students to just stay home instead of loitering around malls and internet cafes. The president required us to convince naman the students to stay at home. Now, syempre, this is only much that we can do. Hindi naman pwedeng i-restrain, no? But so far naman, wala namang pumapalag because uh, I think it's everybody's concern. In Camp Krame, the PNP chief has cancelled almost all major programs such as polystenics and Zumba every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon where more than 2,000 police personnel participate. Even the formation during flag raising ceremony every Monday morning will be revised as part of the PNP's precautionary measures against COVID-19. And all of these things are being done by the Philippine National Police just to prevent also uh, contamination or infection kung meron man. General Gamboa has also procured 300 sets of protective gears for the National Capital Region Police Office who will be assigned in contact tracing. The Kiangan building inside the PNP National Headquarters will be used as a quarantine area if there are policemen who would need to be monitored or observed for the infection. Pwede naman tayong house quarantine, no? pero if necessary talaga na dito gawin sa kampo, kung very immediate, then come up with places na, or specific places for quarantine. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue, Camp Krame. The school year 2019-2020 is about to end, but classes have been suspended in some parts of the country amid the COVID-19 outbreak. Students can look forward to playing a very important role this summer vacation instead. Dante Amento tells us why. The last part of the school year is usually one of the most exciting moments of the year for many students. They also look forward to going a break from school, the summer vacation. However, the government and health authorities have advised students to stay indoors, what with the threats of the COVID-19. In fact, classes in Metro Manila and other parts of the country have been suspended. The Department of Education urges all schools to implement social distancing to prevent the spread of the deadly virus. The palace stresses cooperation is expected from everyone because of the ongoing crisis. Students had better help their parents in cleaning and disinfecting their home for the safety and health of every family member. But this should be done with adult supervision. Children must also learn the basic safety and emergency tips you can watch and learn on the YouTube channel Lifesaver. As for the postponement of the graduation rights, the palace says the decision is with the Department of Education. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. 
Now let's get the latest tally of the coronavirus cases around the world. The viral outbreak that began in China has now infected 119,132 people globally in 115 countries. The global death toll of the virus stands at 4,284. Mainland China has still the overwhelming majority of cases of the infection, which has reported 80,957 cases and 3,162 deaths. COVID-19 cases in Italy continues to rise with 10,149 confirmed cases and 631 fatalities, making it the most infected country next to China. Cases in Iran, meanwhile, jumps to 8,042 with 291 deaths, while South Korea has 7,755 confirmed cases with still 54 fatalities. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, from the 33 confirmed cases yesterday, 60 new cases were reported today, bringing the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 49. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, the number of confirmed cases remains to 33. Patients under investigation or PUIs for possible COVID-19 are now at 763. The number of admitted PUIs at medical facilities rise to 68 and the number of discharged PUIs is at 662. Welcome back. The Manila City Disaster Reduction and Management Office has been conducting day and night misting operations since Monday, March 9. Meanwhile, the Pasig City government holds a disinfecting activity in an elementary school. Bernard Dadis tells us why. Dubbed as Opland Wisik, the daily misting operations of the Manila City government is part of the measures in combating the spread of COVID-19. The Manila City Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office or MDRRMO uses three fire trucks that spray water mist with disinfectant. The areas disinfected so far are the University Belt, the Manila City Hall, Taft Avenue, and the Jones Bridge. Hospitals such as Jose Reyes Memorial Medical Hospital, San Lazaro Hospital, Gat Andres Bonifacio Memorial Medical Hospital, Philippine General Hospital, and Jose Abad Santos General Hospital have also been disinfected. Public markets within Manila were disinfected today by the MDRRMO including Tibisoria Public Market, Wagas Market, Arangay Market, Bambang Market, Central Market, Trabaho Market, Paco Market, Dagunoy Market, and Quinta Market. In Pasig City, Mayor Biko Soto led the disinfecting activity in Pasig Elementary School earlier today. The city's unmanned firefighting machine was used in the operation. Mayor Soto says that Pasig City is COVID-19 ready. The local chief executive added that other public areas and government offices in the city will continue to undergo regular disinfecting activity. Meanwhile, several big sporting events in the county have been cancelled. The Philippine Basketball Association of PBA announced today it will implement an indefinite suspension of all scheduled PBA games including the PBA D-League and PBA 3-on-3 inaugurals. The Palarum Pambansai scheduled for May 1-9 to this year has been postponed. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue. As the number of COVID-19 cases in the country continues to rise, find out where and when and where each case is recorded. Aiko Miguel reports. The first two confirmed COVID-19 cases in the country were recorded days before January ended. Case numbers 1 and 2 came from Wuhan City, Hubei Province, China. Patient number 1 is a 38-year-old female Chinese. Patient number 2 was a 44-year-old male Chinese who died on February 1. Patient number 3 is a 60-year-old female Chinese who went to Bohol. She has recovered and flown back to China. 
in the first week of March. Two additional cases were confirmed by the Department of Health. Case number five is the first reported local transmission case in the country. He is a 62-year-old Filipino male. As the WHO confirmed local transmission, the DOH raised the alert system to Code Red Alert Sub-Level 1. With this, the government declared a state of public health emergency. On March 6, the DOH confirmed case number 6, the wife of case number 5. On Sunday, March 8, the lab results of four additional cases were released. They are patients number 7, 8, 9, and 10. Two are Filipinos, one is Taiwanese, and the other is an American national. On March 9, the government confirmed 14 new cases. Ten cases were confirmed by the DOH, while the four others were confirmed by President Rodrigo Duterte. They are case numbers 11 to 24. Yesterday, March 10, nine new cases were reported by the DOH. They are patient numbers 25 to 33. The DOH apologized for posting an erroneous report of 35 cases earlier that day. Of the total number of cases, 28 are Filipinos, 3 are Chinese nationals, 1 is American, and another is Taiwanese. Currently, the DOH is engaged in identifying cases of COVID-19 through genetic sequencing. 30 of the confirmed cases are recorded in the National Capital Region, one of which is a mortality case. Two are listed in Central Luzon and one case is in Central Visayas. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News & Rescue, Manila. The Department of Health says the public may expect the guidelines for social distancing soon. Meanwhile, some private hospitals resort to using improvised face masks as supply of protective equipment becomes scarce. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Extreme social distancing and enhanced hygiene are effective in minimizing the chance of getting infected and decrease the severity of COVID-19 according to Health Secretary Francisco Duque III. For the benefit of the public, the Health Department will soon release guidelines for social distancing. Secretary Duque cited that class suspensions and implementation of work from home and flexi-work systems are also part of social distancing. When it comes to interacting with other people, Secretary Duque explains a good distance must be observed. You one arm's length na uh, social distancing baka ito ay uh, magiging sapat sa uh, pangsamantala the guidelines are uh, undergoing uh, refinement and this will be uh, finalized within the day we can submit to you the guidelines and to the DILG meanwhile it was revealed during the health committee hearing at the house of representatives today that private hospitals are already experiencing difficulty in purchasing protective equipment there is, Madam Chair, a grave uh, deficit in the na number of uh, PPEs. We are resorting actually to improvising, like uh, we turn our old linen into cloth mask. According to the DOH, there is a supply deficit as the demand for protective equipment such as face masks is surging worldwide. If we have some extras, we would be uh, certainly willing to uh, let the private hospitals have some. But uh, we cannot promise uh, that what they need, we will able to respond to because our priority is the public uh, health workers. The health department assures there is enough supply for the health workers in public hospitals. The DOH says a weekly supply of face masks for public health workers is in place. The health department's inventory includes about 15,000 pieces of face masks. This number is enough for an entire month according to the health department. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Maynilad and Manila Water assure there will be enough water supply in Metro Manila amid the growing number of coronavirus cases in the country. The water concessionaires say they are, there are other mitigating efforts in place. Jo Anano tells us why. Maintaining cleanliness and frequent hand washing remains to be the most effective way to avoid contracting viruses and bacteria. Sufficient water supply is important in order to wash our hands regularly and to maintain cleanliness. And as the dry season approaches and with the absence of rain in the coming months, the water level in Angatam continues to drop. Despite this, water concessionaires Maynilad and Manila Water assures there will be enough water supply for Metro Manila and other nearby towns in the next few months. 
Maynilad explains, however, it still has to implement rotational water service interruptions. Meron tayong uh, sapat na inirarasyon sa ating mga customers. Pinapayuhan natin na ang ating po mga customer na mag-ipun sila ng sapat lamang sa araw-araw na gagamitin nila. Manila Water, on the other hand, assures its customers will be provided water supply at daytime while water service interruption will be implemented from 12 to 4 in the morning. So, ibig sabihin ito, uh, for most times of the day, ay meron tayong tubig. No? So, lahat ng gawain nga bahay, including disinfection, uh, yung madalas na paghuhugas ng kamay kasi yan yung uh, panahon na kumbaga lapas masok sa, sa bahay, ay uh, may tubig. Other efforts for additional water supply include the establishment of new water treatment plants, regular maintenance and pipe repairs, and activation of deep wells. Maynilad and Manila Water appeal to their customers not to hoard water to prevent water shortage. Joan Aro, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Persons who tested positive of the coronavirus disease share their stories while dealing with the virus. According to them, the infections can be mild, but their fear is passing it on to vulnerable groups. Kaf de Marahos reports. The coronavirus did not compare with 45-year-old Dane Jacob Tage Ramling's worst bouts of flu. It was mild. The journalist, who is isolated in Copenhagen away from his family, was the first person in Denmark to test positive for coronavirus after returning home from a holiday in northern Italy. I had very few symptoms and it was only a uh, headache, stomach illness and uh, some cough and uh, throat um, uh, pain in the throat. And uh, it took like five or six days to get rid of all the symptoms, but I was never, never hospitalized. I didn't receive any medicine because I was, I was fine. Uh, it, it was not like not very bad for me, as it is for many other people. Coronavirus is considered most dangerous for the elderly and those with underlying health conditions. Knowing it can be fatal for some made Rambling particularly anxious about passing it on. For me, I don't want to be the one that makes other people sick. So that was my greatest concern and I think that is the greatest concern for everybody is that we don't we don't want this thing to spread more than possible so I prefer to stay home a week or two more or even longer if, if I could prevent anybody from getting this disease. Neil Monroe 22 a Spaniard who defines himself as young and healthy tested positive for coronavirus after returning to Barcelona from Milan Fashion Week. He, like Rambling, wanted to reassure people the symptoms can be mild. The symptoms I'm having are like normal cold, like a flu. I had a little bit of fever, headache, general discomfort, but anyone would have thought it was just a cold. He started noticing symptoms when he got back to Spain, called the emergency services who told him to go to hospital for a test. After testing positive, he was quarantined. I would like to reassure people, if you are young, follow authorities' recommendations. And if you are an older person or a person with previous illness, then take more precautions. Try not to attend big events and try to have very good hand hygiene. Claudio Canceli, the 65-year-old mayor of the Italian town of Nembro in the province of Bergamo near Milan, also has coronavirus. He says his town of 11,000 people has the most cases in the province. Luckily, my case was absolutely positive because after three days of high temperatures and simply taking antipyretic, I have no longer had symptoms. Today, I am well. I have been well for six days so far, and I'm working for my town, and I play my role as a mayor. Every day, the health authorities call him at least twice to ask his temperature and how he is feeling. I will stay in my house for 14 days. I live in a separate room in my home, and I use a separate bathroom. My two family members, my wife and my son, live in the other part of the house, but they are subject to the so-called quarantine too. Luckily, they are fine. They don't have any kind of symptoms. Kat Dumaraos, TV News and Rescue. And in other news, President Rodrigo Duterte assures that Philippine offshore gaming operators are clean. According to Malacanang, President Duterte has no plans to stop Pogo operations for now. 
Rosalie Cause clarifies why. Several senators linked the Philippine Offshore Gaming Operators or POGO to unlawful activities and just recently money laundering. But the president seems to be not convinced by the Senate investigation. President Duterte assures Filipinos that POGOs are clean. I will assure under my oath of office as president of this republic, as elected by you, yung POGO na yan. In so far kami dito, malinis yan. Laro yan para lang sa kabila. But it employs something like 20,000 dito sa Maynila. Dito lang yung pogo. Walang pera dyan. Diretso sa pagkorean. The chief executive says the government is able to generate huge amounts of revenues of about 2 billion pesos per month to sustain government projects. According to the Department of Finance, the government was able to collect 6.4 billion pesos worth of taxes from Pogo in 2019. However, President Duterte supports the passage of laws that will regulate the Pogo industry. The president agreed that these are priority measures. Such measures include amending the Anti-Money Laundering Act and the bank's secrecy law. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. Why News continues. And for the news abroad, here's Kath Dumaraos live from Bangkok, Thailand. Okay, we will come back to uh, Kath Dumaraos in a bit. And for now, uh, we have as President Rodrigo Duterte continues to promote local tourism amid the effects of the COVID-19 threat on the tourism industry, he has scheduled a Boracay visit. Asher Kadapan Jr. is on the island for more details live. Yes, Asher, good evening. Will tighter security is expected to be implemented on Boracay Island as uh, locals await the arrival of President Rodrigo Duterte in uh, Malay Aklan tomorrow. The local police have augmented their personnel for stricter security measures. A total of about 150 policemen have been deployed in mainland Malay, while over 400 more cops will man the island of Boracay. A police briefing to disseminate um, corresponding instructions was done this afternoon to ensure security protocols have been clarified. President Duterte's visit aims to promote local tourism in the country amid the spread of coronavirus disease. The, chi the chief executive has promised to support the tourism department's campaign by showing Filipinos that it's more fun and safe to travel in the Philippines. The president will be joined by DOT Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat in his visit to the island. This will be the first time President Duterte will visit the place after its reopening from rehabilitation in 2018. He also plans to conduct an inspection around Boracay tomorrow afternoon. Will the full schedule of President Duterte tomorrow may end in uh, meeting tourists of Boracay at night. That's it for tonight. Okay, thank well, you very much, Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live from Boracay. And the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the Philippines has just gone further up. Meanwhile, three repatriates from the MV Diamond Princess cruise ship was not sent home today, although their quarantine period has ended. Aiko Miguel tells us why. The Department of Health reported 16 new COVID-19 cases in the country this afternoon. This means the total number of confirmed cases in the country rises to 49. Of those cases, three are reported to be in critical condition, while others are in stable condition. One of those who are in critical condition is patient number 29, the wife of patient number 9. She is an 82-year-old Filipina who is now intubated. She has underlying cardiovascular and endocrine conditions. Wala pa ho tayong, uh, yung sa as to the link, no? Uh, ba, dahil yun po, pinag-aaralang masusi yun, tinitignan lahat po ng datos ng pasyente. Ang meron lang po tayo ay datos kung uh, for this uh, additional 16 patients, wala akong mga pangalan, ngunit meron po akong mga 
gender and age. So ngayon, hindi ko masasabi kung totoong Pilipino o kung, to, kung ano pong nationality nito. Our uh, workers, medical workers, uh, have, are go doing the contact tracing and investigation are just the age and the gender of all of these cases, the new cases. The DOH also reports it has a record of 96 Filipinos abroad positive for COVID-19 as of today. 80 from the Diamond Princess cruise ship, 2 are in the United Arab Emirates, 5 in Hong Kong, 3 in Singapore, and 6 in the USA. Patients 25 and 26 are two repatriates from Japan. Another repatriate from Japan has also been found symptomatic. The DOH awaits the result of the confirmatory test conducted on the repatriate's sample. The three were not sent home today, the end of their 14-day quarantine period inside the new Clark City. Disinfection procedures for the rooms used by the two patients had been implemented as well. Close contacts of the two confirmed cases shall undergo additional 14-day home quarantine and will be continuously monitored by their respective municipal and city health offices. The remaining repatriate is left in NCC awaiting his laboratory results. Only 442 of the 445 repatriates from the MV Diamond Princess were sent off today. The 442 consist of 437 crew members and 5 passengers. They received the clean bill which is their clearance to be sent home. Meanwhile, the Food and Drug Administration supports the testing of samples using test kits developed locally. Upon the DOH and the WHO's approval of the test kits, they can be used for testing beginning Monday next week. The commitment is to start it within a week no, after it was approved and they've committed to 1,000 tests every week. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. And for the news abroad, here's Kath Dumaraos reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. Kath, good evening. Good evening, William. As U.S. coronavirus cases rose steadily, the White House and Congress negotiated measures to bolster the U.S. economy and Americans' paychecks against the outbreak's impact, although there was no immediate sign of a deal. Beverly Saison details why. The rise in the number of U.S. cases of COVID-19, a highly contagious and sometimes fatal respiratory illness, has concerned health officials and spurred calls within Congress for action to expand testing and avert an economic meltdown. Almost three quarters of U.S. states have confirmed COVID-19 with almost 1,000 cases in the United States and at least 30 coronavirus-related deaths reported. Washington state's governor warned of tens of thousands more cases without real action and New York's governor deployed National Guard troops as a containment measure in a hard-hit New York City suburb. The number of people who are infected in an epidemic like this will double in the state of Washington unless we take some, some real action here. And if you do the math, it gets very disturbing. A central feature of the administration's legislative proposal is payroll tax relief, although the extent and duration of the proposal were unclear. The president also went to Capitol Hill today to meet with members of the United States Senate Republican Caucus. There he talked about an economic package, including a call he's calling for payroll tax relief. And uh, I think uh, most important to the president's heart, we want to make sure that hourly workers, hardworking blue-collar Americans that may not have paid family leave today, that small and medium-sized businesses in America would be afforded the resources to provide paid leave so that no one would feel that they have to go to work uh, if they might be infected or if they might have been exposed to the coronavirus. Trump is scheduled to meet with bank executives at the White House on Wednesday. At least 35 U.S. states and the District of Columbia have reported infections of COVID-19. New Jersey on Tuesday reported its first death. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said schools would be closed and public gatherings suspended in a coronavirus hot zone in New Rochelle, a New York City suburb, and deployed National Guard troops there. The United Nations said it would be closing its headquarters in New York to the public until further notice. As the outbreak spreads, daily life in the United States has been increasingly disrupted with concerts and conferences canceled and universities telling students to stay home and take classes online. Beverly Sison, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. The 
European Commission proposed a temporary suspension of airport slot rules that would allow airlines to cut back capacity without risking the loss of lucrative takeoff and landing rights. Meanwhile, the Australian government has unveiled a comprehensive health package to protect all Australians, including vulnerable groups from the COVID-19. Nina Bascon details this report. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison announced a 2.4 billion Australian dollars or 1.56 billion US dollars health package on Wednesday that proposes setting up fever clinics and offering cost-free facilities for people to consult doctors over video calls as it combats the spread of the coronavirus. Today, uh, 2.4 billion dollars is being committed uh, in substantively demand-driven programs to support the health and well-being of Australians. Uh, just, just under 1.2 billion of that will actually, uh, we anticipate, be spent this financial year, uh, particularly as the virus and its impacts ramp up in the months ahead. The federal government said the latest funding package would include the 500 million Australian dollars announced last week to support the costs on the health system from the virus outbreak. The package will be in addition to a multi-billion dollar economic stimulus package the government has said it is preparing. Australia has recorded 116 cases of the coronavirus as of Wednesday afternoon, while three people have died from the disease. Meanwhile, the European Commission on Tuesday unveiled a series of measures aimed at alleviating the effects of the coronavirus on business and in particular on the aviation industry. EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said the European executive proposed to temporarily drop the rule that airlines operate 80% of scheduled services to retain landing slots. We want to make it easier for airlines to keep their airport slot even if they do not operate flights in those slots because of the declining traffic. This is a temporary measure and this temporary measure helps both our industry but it also helps our environment. It will relieve the pressure on the aviation industry and in particular on smaller airline companies but it will also decrease emissions by avoiding the so-called ghost flights. EU Antitrust Chief Margaret Vestager said the European Commission stood ready to consider compensation measures for companies hit by the coronavirus outbreak and added that additional support was on the cards for Italy. Nino Bascon, UNTV News and Rescue. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani is preparing to release 1,500 Taliban prisoners in coming days as the United Nations backed a U.S.-led push to end Afghanistan's 18-year war. Meanwhile, a Dutch prosecutor said that there are strong indications Russia wants to undermine investigations into the downing of Malaysia Flight 17 that killed all its 298 passengers and crew. Jovic Burmas will tell us why. In the Netherlands, Dutch prosecutors accused Russia of trying to sabotage the investigation into the downing of Malaysian Airlines Flight 17 in Ukraine in 2014. Pre-trial hearings began in Amsterdam on Monday. Prosecutors say the defendants, three Russians and a Ukrainian, helped arrange the Russian missile system used to shoot down MH17, a civilian aircraft killing all 298 people on board. Most of the passengers on board the flight were Dutch nationals. Russia has denied any involvement. The defendants, Russian Sergei Dubinsky, Oleg Politov, and Igor Gurkin, and Ukrainian Leonid Karchenko held senior posts in the pro-Russian militias in eastern Ukraine in 2014, according to prosecutors. The four faced preliminary charges of the murder of 298 people and of causing the aircraft to crash. In Russia, Russian President Vladimir Putin told Parliament in televised comments on Tuesday he believed a constitutional amendment that would allow him to run for president again could be adopted if Russia's constitutional court did not object. Putin is required by the constitution to step down in 2024 when his second sequential presidential term ends. But a united Russian lawmaker proposed earlier on Tuesday amending the constitution in a way that would reset Putin's presidential term count back to zero. In Afghanistan, 
Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has approved the release of 1,500 Taliban prisoners as part of efforts to secure a peace deal with the insurgent group. The presidential decree requires all prisoners to give a written guarantee to not return to the battlefield. In exchange, the Taliban has agreed to hand over 1,000 government troops. It comes as the U.S. begins withdrawing troops from the country as part of a linked agreement signed earlier with the Taliban. According to the decree signed by President Ghani, all 1,500 prisoners will be released within 15 days, with 100 prisoners walking out of Afghan jails every day. Talks between the Afghan government and Taliban will take place in parallel with the release. If talks progress, the government has pledged to free 500 more Taliban prisoners every two weeks until a total of 5,000 have been released. Jovic Burma, UNTV News and Rescue. And that is latest from around the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you, Kath Dumaraos, reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach insists that the nightmare, of, the nightmare scenario of either cancelling or postponing the Tokyo Olympics was not discussed at a key meeting on March 4 despite the global spread of the deadly coronavirus. A Filipino athlete who has qualified for the Summer Games continues to prepare for a ticket to an Olympic gold. Nina Armilio tells us why. COVID-19 has struck a lot of countries, including Japan, the venue of the Games of the 32nd Olympiad. But EJ Obiena, Filipino pole vaulting champion and Tokyo Games qualifier, continues to prepare for the international multi-sport event expected to happen more than 130 days from now. We're still in the foundation training, so we're working on things that we see that I need improving on, like uh, my mental side of the competition. He plays tennis in addition to his sport because tennis is all about pinpoint focus, which his coaches say would help him a lot in his jumps. The national pole vault record holder is also gearing up for a bunch of sports competitions in the summer, aside from the Tokyo Olympics, although some of those competitions have been cancelled, he said. We're just going to see what competitions we can find. We're just hoping that everything kind of settles down. EJ trains and stays in the southern part of Italy. This means he is far from where most of the cases in northern Italy have been recorded, like the regions of Lombardy and Emilia-Romagna. But the athlete is taking precautionary measures against the novel coronavirus. I have my mask and I have sanitizers and everything, you know, you just try to stay away and I gotta do what I gotta do too. EJ also calls on Filipinos to continue to support and pray for him on his journey toward an Olympic gold. It's a big job ahead. I'll do my best. The 2020 Summer Olympics is scheduled for July 24th until August 9th. The Tokyo Games has already cost the Japanese government close to 13 billion US dollars based on the official budget. There are more than 1,200 confirmed coronavirus cases in Japan as of today. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news. I am William Theo. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening.